Good day, everyone. My name is David Williams, Executive Director of the United States Association for Energy Economics. It gives me great pleasure to welcome you to today's webinar entitled Energy Sector Recruiting and Career Advice Webinar Series. We are grateful to our moderator, Dr. Kier Loprite from Penn State University and our distinguished panelists to educate our students and young professionals on gaining entry into the energy industries today. First, a little bit about the United States Association for Energy Economics. We are the largest affiliate of the International Association for Energy Economics and provide a forum for the exchange of ideas, experience, and issues among professionals interested in the field. The organization produces two professional journals, a newsletter, and holds conferences and virtual presentations, along with a host of other products and services you can find on our website at www.usae.org. If you're not already a member of the association, we welcome you to join. A few housekeeping matters in regard to today's webinar before I hand things over to our moderator. First, this webinar is being recorded for those that cannot participate in today's live event. If you have questions uh, for our panelists, please click the Q&A button at the bottom of the Zoom window and type your question. We've allocated sufficient time at the end of the webinar to address your questions. And now I would like to introduce you to our moderator, Dr. Kier Loprete, Associate Professor of Energy Economics at Penn State University. Kiera, over to you. Thank you very much, Dave, for the introduction. And thank you so much to all of you who are joining uh, the very first episode of this webinar series that focuses on energy sector recruiting and career advice for undergraduate students. It is my great pleasure to welcome uh, Kristen Rabuka and Siddhartha Sen from IHS uh, Market. Kristen has over seven years of recruitment and talent acquisition experience. And for the past year specifically, she's been recruiting for IHS Market's um, Energy and Natural Resources Division. Sid is a director at IHS Market responsible for uh, upstream asset valuation and economics for the Latin America region. He's been heavily involved in building the North American unconventional economic model, and he's currently leading a team of petroleum engineers and geologists engaged in developing production forecasts, uh, cost estimates, and economic metrics. Um, for upstream um, onshore and offshore uh, assets. I'm also delighted to introduce uh, Emmanuel Aldebot and Lydia Yitman, two senior undergraduates uh, majoring in energy business and finance at Penn State. Um, Lydia and Manny will have an opportunity to ask their own questions to, to their panelists. So, um, so uh, we're looking forward to that. Since this is the first webinar of the series, I just wanted to mention a few things about the structure of the webinar, which is really meant to be a conversation uh, between students and our panelists. And hopefully students will get to learn some takeaways and walk away with some insights at the end of this interactive uh, hour. Um, Kristen will get started, get things started, and she will talk for about 10 minutes um, about job and internship openings that are available at IHS uh, Market. Sid will then follow for another 10 minutes or so, and he will tell us a little bit about his career path in the energy industry and what steps he took uh, that really led him where, where he is right now. After that, Emmanuel and Lydia will get to ask some questions to our panelists. And in the last part of the webinar, we will open the floor to questions from students uh, in the audience. Just a couple of quick things that uh, Dave mentioned. Um, if you have a question that is related to recruiting and career advice for one of our panelists, please ask your question in the Q&A box clarifying if the question is directed at Kristen or Sid. I will monitor the chat box during the event and I will share your questions to our panelists as we, as we move, uh, move along. Obviously, the more engagement there is in the live chat, the more we will feel like we're doing uh, a Q&A. And so I really encourage you to participate and, and ask questions. And finally, there will be a link to the replay 
So if you have to hop off early because you have classes or other reasons, no worries because you will receive a link to, to the replay. I think that's about, that's about it. That's everything in a nutshell. So I will hand this over to Kristen. Um, Kristen, welcome, very welcome and, and thank you again for joining us today. Of course, yes, thank you very much for, for having me. Um, as Kiara said, I'm, I'm currently a talent acquisition specialist at Market. I've been here for, um, it'll be a year at the end of this month. Um, prior to that, I uh, have several years of, of recruiting experience in various industries. Um, so coming to IHS Market, it was my first um, my first experience really recruiting within the energy sector. Um, so it's, it's been a lot to learn, but it's been great. I've, I've really enjoyed it. Um, so here at IHS Market, I mean, we, um, we're a very diverse company in terms of the, the different things that, that we do. Um, we don't just focus within the energy space. Um, we have several different sectors that we work within as well. So it does make us, I think, a very strong and stable company. Um, we've been able to weather the pandemic pretty well. I think we've, we've come out very strong from it. Um, and I can tell you from a recruiting perspective, we are hiring quite a bit, um, which I think is great. It's, it's a good sign of the, the health of the company. Um, the last I checked, I believe we've got close to about 200 openings in the U.S. alone right now. Um, so, so pretty busy um, right now. Um, we do have a good internship program um, that, that we have here at IHS Market. Um, that is, is mainly focused on, um, I would say, juniors going into their senior year, um, where you would come in and do about a three-month internship with us um, the summer prior to your, your senior year. Um, we, we have those open all across the U.S. and in various um, teams, and we do work each year to get those approved and posted, usually by the end of September. Um, we have a specific early careers team that, that focuses on our internship program. I'm not a part of that team. However, I do partner with them pretty closely. Um, if the internship opportunities aren't already posted on our website, they, they should be getting up here in the next couple weeks. Um, so I would definitely encourage everyone to um, you know, keep an eye out on our careers page for those internship opportunities. You can set up alerts as well um, so that you can get an email anytime something is posted. Um, but yeah, so as I mentioned, most of the internship opportunities um, will be available next summer. However, I do think that we are expanding it um, to be a little bit more open to, you know, having internships throughout the course of the year, depending on the student's availability um, and that type of thing. Um, as far as full-time opportunities, um, you know, as I mentioned, we do have close to about 200 open positions in the U.S. right now that we are all very actively recruiting for. Um, you know, most of most of those roles are going to be ones that, you know, we're looking to fill pretty immediately, you know, looking for somebody that's going to be available to work and, and you know, work a full time schedule. Um, so if you're getting close to graduating, if, you, if you're graduating in December, you know, um, it definitely may be the time to go ahead and start looking at something we have available. Um, if you're graduating next spring, you know, just continue to, to monitor the types of roles that we're posting um, so that you can get an idea of what you want to target as, as you get closer to your, uh, your graduation date. Um, I think the best advice that, that I can give, you know, especially in this market, because I, I know it's, it's a challenging time, um, probably especially when you're, when you're just now starting to explore the job market and um, we've got the, the global pandemic going on. Um, you know, there's some companies are doing a lot of layoffs. Most companies are still working virtual at this point. So I, I think it does make networking a little bit more challenging, but I would highly encourage you to just use the resources that you have, be creative, um, definitely utilize LinkedIn. Um, if you haven't already, you know, gone in and created a profile and updated that, I would highly encourage you to do that. Start um, connecting with recruiters, um, you know, and industry leaders um, that, that you come across. Please feel free to send me a connection request as well. I would love to, to stay in touch with you. Um, that's a great tool. Um, attending webinars like this. I know that a lot of places are doing virtual career fairs, which I highly encourage you to do. Um, so just utilize the, the resources that you have um, available to you um, the best way that you can. Um, I 
think that's that's about it on my end. Um, I can open it up to any questions if anybody has any. Maybe why don't we maybe um, um, move to Sid's um, okay. introduction and then we will leave all the questions at the end. So we I will I will keep monitoring the the Q and A and then we'll leave questions at the end. Unless there are some some burning questions, like clarifying <laughs> questions, maybe for for Kristen, something that you would like to see clarified. I I don't see any open questions. So okay, so see. Thank you, Kristen. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, uh, thanks, Kristen, and uh, good afternoon to everybody who's on this call. Um, I would highly encourage. Um, all the students who are on the call to please ask questions um, to us. This is a great opportunity for you all to know more about the company. This is a great opportunity to know more about us as professionals and what we do um, and why we do it and how it impacts the energy industry, etc. So feel free to ask any question. No question is wrong. No question is stupid. Go ahead and ask it. Um, as an introduction, my name is Siddharth Sen. I work at IHS Market um, in the Upstream Asset Valuation Group. Um, I lead the research for the Latin America region. Um, I lead a team of seven analysts. Um, and basically, our main role is to focus on and develop um, analysis for upstream assets, which can then be looked at by uh, oil and gas companies as they decide to buy or sell their assets. That is basically what we do. We try to give an economic valuation for the upstream assets across the globe. Um, in my part, mostly is focused on Latin America. So uh, how did I reach this role, uh, this position or this role? And um, how did I start with the whole energy, trans uh, energy career? Um, and I'll, I'll, I'll explain that by basically going to the beginning, which is me getting my um, MBA from Rice University uh, back in 2009. So I graduated in 2009. And once I um, graduated, I joined a competitive firm of IHS Market. So I've been doing valuations for more than a decade now. Um, I joined a competing firm and um, had a very good experience there because I joined as a researcher. It was basically just out of college and getting a first job out of college, out of postgrad college. Um, and I joined as a research analyst. My main focus there was North America upstream research. And I remember um, that my focus was on the Rockies. So I was doing a lot of analysis on the lower 48 region, uh, specifically in the Rocky Mountains. So understanding more about the Mountains and Niobrara uh, and all those kinds of formations. Um, from there, after, a couple, after about a year and a half of working as a research analyst, what I did is I tried to start understanding and I'm not just limiting my uh, information and my knowledge to, 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 the, not the, uh, to the Rockies region, but also expand it uh, to basically try and understand what's going on within the US and the unconventionals. And so what that helped me in doing is it started helping me in understanding uh, more about the dynamics across the lower 48 region. And it started getting me more and more inter interested in how a company thinks about um, investing and developing assets across the, across the country rather than just the region. Um, this knowledge in this uh, conversations, these conversations that I started having um, around the company led me to become a corporate analyst. So I moved into a role as a corporate analyst, uh, from a research analyst to a corporate analyst. And then I had about seven companies under me as a, as a portfolio of assets. Um, uh, and, and I used to analyze those seven companies, um, not just across the US, but across the globe. So what started as understanding what's going on in the US um, helped me land up with that I could look at seven companies and their operations around the world and start thinking about it in that way. So seven uh, companies like Marathon, Stata, which is now Equinor, those were in my portfolio of assets um, or portfolio of companies. Um, from there, I moved into IHS in 2013 and um, I've been working with IHS markets since then. Um, I joined IHS as, 
as someone who, who was brought in to build a new product for the company, which was called the North America Supply Analytics Tool, uh, along with uh, Vantage, which is basically where I currently uh, reside. So I spent uh, the first year or so just building models, uh, one after the other, um, which would help in analyzing the North America market, uh, both for conventionals and for unconventionals. And while I was doing that, I again started expanding a little bit outside of what I'm doing and tried to understand how do I support the high-tech market itself in selling this? How do I do some business development activities <clears throat> the, the company benefits from the research that we do? Um, within six months of our release of the product, we had crossed more than a million dollars in revenue, which was great, which was great um, because it was a new product which, is, which had come into market. Um, from there, I moved on to working on Vantage from to middle of 2014, end of 2014. And that was where the focus mostly was on upstream valuations again. But again, there was no upstream valuation tool in IHS market at that point in time. So we were given the responsibility of developing it for, for the company. And that is the, one of the main reasons why I was even attracted towards this job because it was the company was basically giving us the opportunity. Um, they were giving us a blank page and saying, put in your own things into it and let's see how it, how it all turns out. And so since 2014, I have been deeply involved in development of the models, development of the analysis, um, working on product development. So basically not just analysis, but also on the product side, how and how the platform should look, um, what kind of updates should happen on the platform um, and on the business development side, which is basically uh, trying to increase the sales for the product as well as the revenues for the product. So it has been an excellent uh, opportunity and a great learning experience because it has helped me develop skills, not just in analysis, but also um, in presenting, to, presenting analysis to clients, uh, talking about insights that we have come up with, and not just for the product, but for IHS, for, for IHS on a whole IHS market. Like Kristen was saying, we have a lot of products um, across a lot of uh, business lines. And uh, we always need people who can understand these various business lines so that we can connect the dots and tell a good story about the whole energy spectrum rather than just talk about one part of it. Um, and so that's where, that's where I sit. While I'm presenting Vantage and the upstream analysis, I'm also talking to clients about commodity prices. I'm also talking to them about company strategies. So also uh, touching upon uh, subjects like risk with a country or, or also as simple as geology and, and, and where exactly uh, could the next exploration uh, region be. So it's a spectrum that you can, can talk on if, you, if, you, if, you're do, if you're joining a company like IHS and if you are ready to, ready to learn and listen to all of, your, all of your teams who are excellent in their own subjects. Um, and, and then you can derive from that and, and enhance your own analysis and at the same time present it to others. Um, and like I was saying, uh, I'm also involved in uh, some of the product development and the business development activities. Um, and I think that is one of the things which has helped me uh, keep progressing within the firm as well, because um, if you and, and, and then please ask questions so that I can elaborate more. I know I'm getting uh, to my 10 minutes here. Uh, but basically, one of the things which has always helped me is not just be limited to what the job description of my role is, but also keep on learning about what the other guys are doing uh, and spend time uh, understanding it and also trying to help them achieve their goals. Because that is when um, I've seen uh, that the best learning happens, the best career progression happens. And IHS has a very, very good system in place. Uh, Kristen can talk a lot about that. Two paths, uh, path of technical growth, path of managerial growth. Uh, there are many things we can get into. Um, and, and, and just one last point on the internship, which Kristen was talking about. It is an excellent program. I have been involved in it for two years, not, the third, um, not this year, but uh, previous two years I was involved with the internship program. We also have a global internship project which is given at during the internship program. So you can actually be working with a global team, working on projects which 
and those projects are at the end of the day uh, presented to the CEO directly where he picks up a idea from amongst the interns which could develop into a business idea later on. So it's a very hands-on internship experience. It's not like you're just joining as an intern and you are trying to do some uh, Excel update for somebody. Uh, you are actually involved in the business and you are actually trying to help IHS market with new ideas, new innovations, because we are a data management firm and we want to know more about uh, innovative ideas about how we bring in more technology um, and, and AI into, into our analysis. Um, so I'll pause there and, and I'll see if you have any questions. I have not read, but I see there are some questions. So I'll pause there and I'll, I'll, I'll let uh, questions come in as well as others comment as well. Mm. Let's see. So there is, um, yeah, there are there are some some questions that are. I'll I'll just maybe ask this question that is specifically related to the internship program, since this is a it's a good. Um, it's definitely connected to what you said. Um, uh, Alexa Vigieri asks, "How old do you have to be to be part of the internship program?" Um. Yeah. Good question. There's. Uh, Usually it's targeted for, um, for students who are entering into their senior year of, of college or, um, or entering into a master's degree program. Um, that's usually what we, what we target because um, the idea is, you know, that the following summer, you know, once you've graduated, we could hopefully have a permanent position available for you. Um, however, there have been cases, um, you know, where we, we have, you know, brought on someone that's, you know, a sophomore going into their junior year and we have them back the next summer as an intern. Um, so there's, there's not necessarily um, an age limit. Okay. Thank you. So maybe I'll just ask another one before um, handing over to Manny and Lydia for, with, their, with their questions. Uh, Julia Snodgrass asks, are there any hard skills that you would recommend self-teaching for students whose um, academic background is more qualitative? Um, would that be data analytics, statistical modeling? What would, you, what would be your suggestions? And this is really directed at both, I guess. You can both chime in. Okay, um, maybe I'll, I'll go first with what usually we look at when we are um, recruiting people, and obviously then Kirsten can add, add points to it. Um, we, we are basically a data analytics research and consulting firm. So we are looking for skills which will enable people to do the roles which um, this, 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 this definition requires. Um, I would suggest that anybody who has maybe qualitative skills and wants to develop quantitative skills should uh, take the opportunity and the time out to learn um, wherever they can, if it's LinkedIn or Coursera or any other any of the other online platforms, uh, as long as it uh, benefits or, or enhances your skill set, go for it. Um, I personally know that for my interviews, I put in a Excel test um, for all my candidates because we, we, we deal with huge data sets. And so we need to know that the person, whoever is going to join my team will be comfortable with those um, because that's the starting point. If you're not comfortable with those, then uh, you won't be comfortable with the role as well. Um, in, in, and, I, and I know that most of the other groups within the research team, at least, we are all dealing with a huge uh, data set and we all are looking at opportunities and ways to improve and increase our efficiencies. Um, so yeah, I, I see a lot of value if you all can go and do those courses and then um, it, it doesn't really matter where you go and learn from as long as during the interview, if I'm asking you a question on, um, Python or, 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 or Excel, you know the answer. As long as you can give me the answers to my questions, um, I, I, I would look at you as a very suitable candidate for, for the role. Yeah, I think, I think that, that was good. I said, I, I agree. I mean, any, any type of um, continuing development that you can pursue 
um, you know, outside of outside of school, um, you know, additional classes that you can take. Um, I know even LinkedIn a lot of times offers um, some specific classes if you're wanting to learn um, more about Excel um, or, or things like that. I mean, some of some of the things I hear a lot in the positions that I'm recruiting for, um, you know, because we are a, a data analytics company, um, you know, I I think Excel is a really important skill set to have, you know, pretty advanced knowledge of Excel. I, I think at this point, um, Power BI is another one I have, Python, R. Um, so anything you can do to just familiarize yourself with, with those. Um, and as Sid said, be able to demonstrate your, your knowledge um, about it during an interview. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you both so much. Okay, so maybe now we can move to the questions that were developed before the webinar by, by Lydia and Manny. Both of them have one question for Kristen and one question for Sid. Um, so maybe Lydia, do you want to get started? Yeah, sure. I will ask my first question um, for Sid. We want to know, looking back, uh, what advice would you give yourself when you were like early college or early career stages? All right. Um, so thanks, Lydia, for the question. Um, my my suggestion to everybody who's who's in college or in early in their career is always um, a couple of things. One is you have to continue continue learning. So you have to be open to learning. And second is building your network. Um, I've spoken to a lot of students I'm, uh, uh, at RISE because I'm just involved with, with RISE as, as an alumni. And they ask me the same question, Lydia. Um, and I always tell them the same thing, like, hey, you, it is extremely important that you, you keep listening and understanding and learning as much as you can earlier in your career, because that's when um, there are more opportunities uh, to learn, as well as um, you, you, you can ask the questions and you have people who sit down with you and spend the time to bring you up to speed with how they have been working on certain things, etc. And so they're more open to uh, explaining concepts to you so that you get a good, solid foundation in terms of understanding the, the subject matter. Um, and then the second one is obviously building a good network, wherever you are. If you are in college, build a network. No people in your class, no people in the class besides you. Um, because it is always uh, helpful to, to know more people within a wide variety of uh, sectors in the energy uh, business line. So that if someone ends up in consulting and you end up in research and someone ends up with, a, with an investment bank, you're all connected and you all know each other. Um, and 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 earlier in your career when you join a firm especially a firm like ihs market it will help you a lot if you go out of your own team and so i think this is this is uh, similar to any company any big firm that you go and join it would be very nice the first step is obviously knowing your own team but at the same time it would be it would be very very useful to you if you know people from other groups and other teams because in this world of collaboration it is extremely important to talk to them get their views their knowledge their insights and use that to enhance your own analysis um, and the network also helps because say after three years down the line you are in your role and you want to change your role the network is already there for you to reach out and see if you can make a change um, and and ihs also supports that and encourages that a lot because that is also seen as a way of personal as well as career development so uh, there could be occasions when you are in a team where um, because of whatever reason the structure of the team is set in such a way that you might not see a progression in your career within your group but you might find a great opportunity in some other group and you can only access those groups um, uh, more efficiently if you've already spent the time building your network for the last two or three years. So those would be the two main things that I would keep in mind um, if, if I'm earlier in my career or if I'm still in college, just uh, about to uh, get into the workforce. Thank you so much. That was really helpful uh, knowledge to have. 
Um, my next Chris, uh, question will be for Kristen. Uh, COVID-19 has changed a lot of internships and they're being canceled, um, creating different experiences for students who are graduating this year. So my question is, is IHS um, adapting its outlook and experience requirements for new hires and interns? Yeah, um, we were very fortunate to, to still be able to have an internship program that we changed to a virtual format. Um, so, so it was a little bit different for us. It was a learning experience, I think, for everyone involved. Um, I think that we can, we can take into, um, you know, future internship programs. Um, should we, should we have to have them virtually or have the opportunity to have their other virtual internship programs? Um, so this summer we, um, we had a five week virtual internship program. Um, and, you know, I, I wouldn't say anything is necessarily changing in terms of the skill set that we're looking for in our interns. Um, I do think it, it does make it even more important um, for, for anyone who is coming into an internship to take initiative, to very much be a self-starter, um, to make sure that they're, you know, afraid to ask questions um, because it's just different when you're not sitting there and, and you know, in, front of your manager every day, um, having them show you things in person. Um, so, I mean, it, it definitely has changed the way that we have had to approach our internship program, um, but we, we very much do value bringing interns into the organization. Um, it's something that we are, you know, striving to continue to do, um, whether, you know, it's hopefully having them back in person next summer or if needed, you know, taking what we learned from this past summer and making an enhanced virtual program next summer. Thank you so much, Kristen. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, so how now it's uh, Emmanuel's turn and he will also get to ask one question uh, to Sid and one to Kristen. Go ahead. <clears throat> Hi, can you guys hear me? Okay, good. I always like to make sure. Um, so I guess this first question will go to you, Sid. Um, what's one challenge that you overcame in order to get the position you hold today? All right, uh, thanks, Emmanuel. Um, so um, how I would answer this question is maybe, so there, I wouldn't say there is one particular or two particular challenges as such which we had to overcome, which I had to overcome um, to get to the role um, that I'm doing right now. Um, but but there were there were occasions of, of learning and opportunities to learn um, along the way. One of the things which helped me a lot and helps me even today um, is basically is basically trying to listen and to understand the other person's perspective, and it has been it, it is sometimes a challenge because you you might be in a discussion with someone. Say, let me build it with an example. For example, we do deal a lot with uh, talking around um, supply, supply for a country. For this example, let us say the supply is for Brazil, um, and then. I might have a view on how the supply will, will look. There is another team uh, which might think, um, well, if we take a few other factors into consideration, supply might look a little different. Um, and so the challenge here is how do we bring both of them to the same part, to the same page, so that, um, so, so that there is a consensus. And so what I do here is, that is the challenge, or that is the main focus here, is how do we bring these kinds of views together and uh, again, to my point earlier on, collaborate so that we can come up with a very nice um, cohesive view for our internal as well as our external clients. So my, my, what I deal with on a daily basis is talking to various teams and getting their views together and trying to build a path forward for, for, for our clients. Um, and so that could be a challenge as well as the opportunity because, because it helps in bringing together quality information for our clients. That was great. Um, so I guess uh, going to the next question, this one will be for Kristen. Um, what skills uh, can upcoming graduates focus on 
on the if if they're on like the financial side of the uh, energy industry, um, to like what kind of skills can they sharpen to become more competitive um, with uh, graduates from different majors? For example, um, energy business and finance versus finance, or if they're on the uh, engineering side of things, energy engineer versus a mechanical engineer. Mm -hmm. So what, what kind of skills would you say for each? Mm -hmm. um, that's a good question. I think it's, it's just, um, it's recognizing that you need to, you need to, to really understand the, the full picture. I think when you're looking at the energy industry overall um, and not just get siloed into your one area, um, certainly you'll be, you know, an expert, you know, in your certain area, but it's, um, you know, I would recommend um, definitely following the news. I mean, things that are going on around the world certainly always have huge impacts on the energy industry. So staying up to date on current events, um, you know, following um, in and, and just reading about different things within the energy industry. And I can personally relate to this because when I, when I came over here a year ago, I, I had no experience in the energy industry. Um, so I've had to learn a lot. I mean, just from, from the very basics of, of, you know, looking at fracking and then, <laughs> you know, midstream and downstream processes and um, then going over more into the petrochemical side. So it's, um, you have to really have that natural curiosity to want to explore and discover and see how it all fits together. Um, certainly no one is going to expect you to have the knowledge of a petroleum engineer if, if you're not a petroleum engineer. You know, if you didn't go to school for that and um, that's, not what, that's not what you focus in. Um, you know, no, nobody's gonna expect you to have that, that engineering, you know, expertise, but it, at least just having and understanding how it, how, how it all fits together um, and being able to work cross-functionally with different groups and add value where you can. Thank you very much. Actually, there's a, there's a question um, in the chat that, that is really related to this point, so I'm gonna ask it right now. Um, a student asks, is IHS market more towards the consulting slash finance side, or do you also offering some engineering jobs? And, and what would those be? Can you tell us a little more about this? Because energy, let me give you maybe just one, one sentence background here. Um, Manuel and Lydia are from this program that is called Energy Business and Finance that really integrates uh, business and economics with uh, like basic courses in, in science and technology. But there are other majors in the same uh, department and some students from other majors like petroleum and natural gas engineering or energy engineering, they're joining us live. And so probably they're asking these questions because they have a little bit of a different like background. And so they, they wanna know whether IHS market would be potentially a good fit for them. To, to apply as well. Um, so I can start, Sid, and then if you want to elaborate. Um, but I would I would say it's it's actually all of the above. I mean, we we hire uh, people with all of these majors um, just due to the various aspects of our business um, and, and what's needed to support that role. Um, we do have consulting services that we provide to our clients. Um, of course, certainly someone with um, more of a business background or a finance background could fit in quite well, but we also hire engineers into these positions, chemical engineers or petroleum engineers, um, depending on the clients that they're working with. Um, you know, we, we have roles where we're specifically looking for geologists. Um, if it's focusing on one of our, um, you know, products, our software platforms that is looking at, um, you know, drilling and, and analyzing wells, you know, we, we like to have somebody with a geology background who can understand how all of that works and they'll be communicating with the, the team out in the field. Um, so the, I think that's one of the good things about IHS market is um, we really have a place for all of these different types. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree completely with Kristen. Um, from my personal 
um, experience and people who I have recruited with, uh, within my team. So I have uh, petroleum uh, engineers, I have a geologist, I have a geophysicist, um, uh, one person from a finance background. Um, so we have a mix, we have a mix. And the reason why we have a mix is because we want um, these diverse background, or the people with these diverse backgrounds to come and add value to the evaluation process that that I and the team are doing. Um, so we want to have these perspectives from various people. If you're looking at a, at a field uh, in Brazil, 2P for example, we want the petroleum engineer to come in and talk to us and tell us more about uh, more about how how the development of the whole whole project would look like. We, we have cost engineers who are sitting and building a cost analysis for us. So diverse backgrounds. We need people from diverse backgrounds so that we can build these analyses with these different perspectives, um, and 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 take it forward from there. Um, and and also we have specific products where specific skill sets are required. Um, uh, we, we do consulting for that. Obviously, we need various backgrounds. We have uh, products like JEPS and PEPS where you need people who are very, very technically aligned um, geologists and uh, people who are uh, well versed with the fiscal regimes of a country. Um, and, and, and my last comment here is uh, the program that Lydia and Emmanuel are from. Um, again, I can only go back and refer to one of the colleges I know about, which is RICE. Um, and there also, there is a very similar program, Energy Economics. Um, and over the last two years, we have had like four or five students who have come in as interns and now they're full-time. So it's it's an example which I'm just give, giving out. But obviously, we are looking for people with that kind of background as well. Wonderful. Thank you. Um, so let me let me ask you another question uh, that Julianne um, typed into the Q and A box. Do you have any advice for people who have a few years' experience in the in the engineering and the operations side of the energy industry who would like to make the move into the business consultancy analytics area? Um. So I'll, I'll, I'll go first um, and try to basically uh, put a few thoughts out there. So a lot of the people who join IHS are from the industry. Um, they, they are people who are working either with an operator or, or with a services firm um, and uh, were doing um, job on the field, et cetera. And they have all transitioned into, into IHS market. It all depends on um, the need that the firm has, and as well as the individual's capability to not just, again, this goes back to my point on knowing more than just what you're doing. Um, the individual's capability on, on having a little bit of a bigger picture than just doing what they're doing. So if you are in the service field and you're going to the field and you're doing a fracking job, but if you just limit yourself to hey, I am going to do my fracking and that's it. Then, then you are not really the ideal candidate. You should be the person who should have some more information. Why am I doing this fracking? How is my fracking? How are my costs compared to other uh, other costs in other regions? How does this fit into the whole picture of unconventional development in North America? Why is unconventional North America a big deal? How has it impacted the dynamics uh, with Saudi? How has it impacted what the Saudis and the Russians are currently doing by suppressing prices? Why are they suppressing these prices? If you start answering these questions and start thinking more and more through these, then you become a very, very good candidate for, for a firm like IHS Market. Because our conversations with our clients will not end at me going and saying the valuation for an asset is 500 million. That's not what my client is looking for. He's looking for a lot more than that. Of the whole context of why I've come up with that answer. Thank you. I don't know if Kristen has, wants to chime in there. Oh, I was going to say I, I agree. I definitely agree with all that. Um, I think it's it's just as as he mentioned, it's about demonstrating your interest, not just you know saying you'd be interested in, but actively you know, researching those areas, 
reaching out to people, networking, seeing if you could even job shadow someone that is in a role that you want to learn more about just to, to understand that side of the business. Um, so just not, not being afraid to reach out, not being afraid to ask questions. Um, a lot of times if you get a, a different type of, of role, um, you know, changing roles, um, you have to, you know, understand that you might have to, to take a little bit more of an entry level position initially. Um, as you learn the industry or learn that and then work your way up. So I think it's just about having the, the flexibility um, to do that and, and just working hard to reach that goal. Okay, thank you. So I, I, will now, I will now ask you a question uh, that was also popular among our students. So I'm asking on behalf of the, of the students now, what experiences do you value most in new hire intern that makes them a standout candidate? Here are some examples we would like you to comment on. Leadership in a club, research related to the major, community service, or part-time job that is not related to the major. I, mean, I, I, I would say all of the above. I mean, we, we love to see, we love to see extracurricular activities on, on a resume, um, whether it's involvement in, in a club, leadership opportunity, if you're a leader, that's, that's always great too, but just involvement, and involvement in community service, um, you know, even if it is a part-time job, you work while you're in school, because I think, um, you know, it speaks a lot for, for work ethic and, um, you know, showing that you like to get involved and stay busy. Um, so those are always nice things to see. Uh, search related to the role, obviously, um, is, is very important. Um, if it's something specifically related to the, the position. Um, internships, um, you know, get as, as many internships that, that you can um, as it pertains to your major to get some industry experience, I think is, is always something that we're always looking at, too. Thank you. I would agree with Kristen there. Yeah. Kristen. Okay. Okay. So more questions in the Q and A. We have lots of questions here. Uh, so Kevin um, who asks, are there any jobs at IHS market that seniors graduating in spring 2021 can apply to right now and could potentially start after graduation? Um, that's a good question. That's, it's highly unlikely that any of the roles that we would have posted are available right now. Um, just for business reasons, you know, we probably would want to fill it prior to next spring. Um, but you never know. I mean, it's, I, I don't, I don't want to say no, because um, I think a lot of it, you know, there can be some unique situations. Um, we could internship possibilities opening up that you know, could lead to support time where you started as an intern next summer um, and moved into a full-time role. We have seen that happen from time to time. Most likely any of the, the full-time roles that we have posted um, at this stage, um, you know, we are looking to hire someone within the next, you know, two to three months. Um, it, it never hurts though to go ahead and, and apply. Um, if, if you see a position that you're really interested in, um, I'm just one recruiter here in the U.S. in IHS market. We've got about um, four or five others in the U.S. and then even more globally. Um, so that way your resume can at least start getting in front of the different recruiters. Um, you know, if, if they see something about your background they really like, it could be a good opportunity for them to at least go ahead and make a connection with you. Um, if nothing's available at that time, then, you know, they can, stay, um, they can stay connected with you for when you are getting closer to graduation and see what opportunities are available then. Thank you. Another question related to internship opportunities. Are there any internship opportunities available for sophomores going into their junior year? Yeah, absolutely. Um, it, and it, it depends on it depends on what the team and the manager are wanting to do. Um, you know, as I mentioned, I ideally the way the program is set up is it, it's a, a junior going into their senior year. However, we have had situations where, you know, um, a sophomore going into their junior year have interned for us um, one summer and even come back the next summer and then gotten offered a full-time job once they graduated. 
Um, so it's, it's absolutely possible. I don't know if Sid, yeah, Sid, if you want to, if you want to, if either of you wants to chime in once the other one is, is done, please do so. Yeah, yeah, both these were um, right in Kristen's expertise and more. Expertise. So, so we will, uh, thank you. So Mitchell asks, does IHS break down entry level positions within their careers page? That's a good question too. Um, my, my suggestion would be, because I, I know this can get really confusing when you're starting to look at jobs and every company has their own titles for different positions and what they consider a senior level or a manager level. Um, my best advice would be to um, look at the job qualifications closely. You should be able to tell if it's more of an entry level position based on what's listed within the, the minimum qualifications. Um, you know, if, if it states they're looking for someone with five plus years of experience, you know, that's, that's obviously not an entry level position. We're looking for someone um, who's got a little bit of work experience. Um, if it says, you know, a college degree is required, um, you know, nothing about the years of experience or, you know, one to two years of experience, I, I would definitely encourage you to go ahead and apply to those types of positions. Um, because um, you know, most likely they would be open to exploring people that have just graduated with a you know bachelor's or um, master's degree. For IHS market specifically, um, you know, most of our entry level positions would be titled as um, you know, I would say an associate or a specialist. Um, you know, we'll have our, our research analyst. Um, you know, a lot of times we'll we'll hire people right out of school in those types of positions. A question from an international student. Um, do you offer visa sponsorship for international students? I'll take this one too. Um, yes, we do. Um, we evaluate it on a case by case basis. Um, there are several positions that we that we recruit for that are looking for very specific, you know, skills, you know, STEM type, you know, where we're looking for people with STEM type degrees. Um, you know, and in these instances, um, we, we are typically able to sponsor visas. Um, we, we have a legal team that evaluates each scenario um, to see if, it's, uh, if it would be feasible, you know, for the business and, and for the individual candidate for us to sponsor them, but it is something that we do. Okay. Um. Let's see, <laughs> more, more questions. Uh, are there any types of positions or fields within the greater energy sphere that you see as growing in terms of recruiting, growth opportunities for graduating students, especially post uh, COVID-19? Which, which ones are the types of positions or fields that you see as growing? If there is, if there is one, maybe there's none. So we would value your insights, both both of you. Yeah. So, so I'll take a, try to answer that question uh, first. So I'm reading the question types of spheres. Okay. So basically, within um, IHS market, what we have, what we have. Um, realized while talking to a lot of our clients who, who, who basically are across the spectrum of, I, of, of the energy industry, be it operators, service providers, financial companies, um, or, or, or even, even, even um, other consulting firms uh, who have been our clients. What we've seen is there is a huge uh, conversation around energy transition. Um, and so I, for one, know for a fact that there are a few products which are being uh, product services etc which are being thought about discussed internally as well uh, which all are trying to cater to and answer this and that is one of the things where i see a clear need for more experts to come in um, be it say talk about co2 emissions or um, challenges with uh, water supply of water um, those are the kinds of things which 
which I think um, everybody's talking about. Now, in terms of energy transition, people are also talking about where, uh, when does the oil, when does the dependence on oil uh, become less, uh, less, less evident. It, there are views on this. Uh, some people say it will completely end, others say it will not. Um, uh, I'll, I'll, not, I'll not share my views, uh, but, but basically at the end of the day, um, there is a huge debate going on. So anybody who can answer those kinds of questions are also people who would be, who would be uh, of, of great demand for, for a firm like IHS. Um, but yes, energy transition is something which we are um, focusing on. Uh, and I, I see IHS market as a company focusing on for, for at least the short term, at least the next three to five years uh, while this picture evolves. Um, and in, uh, in addition to that, there is also the social responsibility aspect. If you all have followed some of the companies and their um, presentations, quarterly calls, etc., for the last one and a half years, if I'm not wrong, the, the, every major oil and gas company has started adding a slide on environment and safety. And so basically that is another thing which is coming up. Everybody needs to be able to talk about uh, what their company is doing to make sure that they are uh, doing their activities in a manner that it is not harming the environment. Um, and, and so experts in that field are also going to be needed and required. And IHS market is going to be sought out for solutions in that. So we are sure that we'll be needing more people on that front as well. Okay, this was really helpful. I don't know if Kristen has any any additional thoughts on the issue, but thanks. Yeah, okay, this, that was great. This was yeah, this was really really two two three key help um, key areas. Um, Kristen, maybe this is uh, specifically for you. Are there any uh, GPA requirements uh, for your internship uh, program? Um, and could you could you tell us a little more about that? Yes, um, so we are typically looking for, um, you know, someone that has a, a 3.0 or above um, is, is usually our cutoff. Um, I mean, we're not, we're not going to be completely strict and stringent on that. Um, we, we evaluate each candidate based on, um, you know, their, their skill set, um, but typically um, it's going to be a 3.0 or above. Okay, thank you. Um, I guess maybe one last question. I know we're, we're approaching the top of the hour and I would like to leave an opportunity to Lydia and, and Manny and see if they have any follow-up questions for, for our speakers. But Isabella is asking, this is a question for both Chris, sorry. This is a question for both Kristen and Sid. What are the major skills that you're looking for in hires with a master's degree? How do these skills differ, if they do, uh, relative to a candidate that only has a, a bachelor's degree? So um, I'll, I'll attempt to answer that question in this fashion. Um, I think someone who comes into IHS market as a, with a bachelor's degree would be more at a um, a junior associate level, whereas someone with a master's would be more at a senior associate or principal analyst level. And so that basically distinction um, explains the different roles that both of them would be involved in, whereas a associate would be involved more at um, hardcore analysis and looking through and understanding and working through the models and doing the analysis, etc. Um, a principal analyst would be expected to not only do that, but also start building the overall context, like, like I was talking earlier on as well, not just doing um, the Excel formulas and getting to the solution, but also trying to understand how this fits in within uh, the bigger picture. So um, with a master's degree, I would assume that some, if, if I was recruiting, uh, today and if I have someone with a master's degree coming to join my team, um, I would expect them to be uh, self-motivated, more self-motivated, self-accountable, um, less amount of supervision required, um, 
they are taking up projects on their own they are trying to complete projects on their own initiative taking uh, negotiation skills would be necessary because you're talking to various people in various groups um and and getting a comp uh, developing a comprehensive um, view so that you can be put in front of clients to engage with them uh, an associate would be someone who we would most likely want as uh, who has hard who has very good skills of analyzing a tool such as excel so that would be my clear distinction for for undergrads versus graduates which is someone with a master's degree thank you i think that was that was really helpful uh, to hear um, i guess one last question is what majors do you tend to select uh, the most students from for your internship program um, i can take that one um Again, just going back to the the wide array of different types of positions that we have available here at, at IHS Market, um, I don't think there's really, you know, just one particular major that we focus on. I mean, I, I will say, um, I mean, I've only been involved in one internship recruiting process here this past year, um, and, and from my experience, um, we did hire a lot of people with engineering degrees. Um, whether it was petroleum engineering, chemical engineering, mechanical engineering, um, you know, so we did look for people with those majors. Um, you know, finance was also a big one for us, depending on, you know, what the, what the role was. Um, we did hire a couple of, of um, interns that had the energy economics um, major that they, that they were majoring in. So, um, you know, and even, I mean, we had some sales internships where people were coming in and, um, you know, working within our sales group. So we hired a couple people with marketing degrees. Um, so we really don't focus in on just one particular type of major overall. It depends on the, the, the internship that you're being hired for, you're gonna be working in. Thank you. So I don't see any other, um, let's see, any other questions in the Q&A box. I wanted to ask Lydia and Emmanuel if they have any quick follow-up questions for our panelists. Um, Lydia, do you have one? If not, I could go. No, I, you guys answered all my questions and beyond, so thank you for talking with us. Go ahead, Manny. All right. Um, so I guess this question is for, for the both of you guys. So how has company culture impacted your uh, career development? And how has this experience been different than other companies that you worked for? That's a, that's a good question, um, Emmanuel. Um, I can, I, I'll speak for IHS market. Um, and, and, and I, I would basically, my personal experience of working with ISIS Market has been excellent. Um, we are an extremely collaborative uh, team of people. Um, and the reason is because we, we have a lot of uh, our work is basically uh, dependent on having a collaborative nature um, uh, environment. And, and so we spend a lot of time, we spend a lot of time interacting with each other. We spend a lot of time uh, focused on ensuring that the other groups and the other team members also benefit from our work and vice versa. Um, and so we, we, we think that the culture does play a very important role. It has played an extremely important role even during this COVID situation when all of us have been asked to stay at home. Um, our productivity levels have not really um, come down. Uh, we've been told this by senior management who are looking at these numbers. Um, and there is an ex there is a huge flexibility uh, which is provided to us, which I know some of the other companies are not uh, being able to provide to their uh, employees. But at IHS Market, we have a lot of flexibility in terms of our work hours. Uh, we are not being asked to basically stay from one point of time to the other point of time. As long as the work gets done, there is an immense amount of trust and respect for each and every colleague. We, we believe that everybody's doing their work and the work is getting done. That reflects on the work, that reflects on the culture, that reflects on how we interact with each other. Uh, so I'll stop there and I'll let Kristen also add her points. 
Sure. Um, I do get asked this question a lot as, as a recruiter, and um, I love talking about our culture because I, I think it's so great. I, I think that here at IHS Market, we have a very um, inclusive and, and positive culture, I, I feel. Um, I, I really admire our CEO, um, especially through, you know, all of this, this COVID stuff. Um, I think he's a very, he's a very strong, he's a very inspirational leader. He's very focused on employee well-being, you know, so he encourages all managers in the company to show empathy, you know, um, you know, during this time, you know, with their employees, understanding everybody's in a unique situation, you know, be flexible, um, put a lot, you know, put trust in your employees. Um, he actually gave everyone three extra vacation days this year, um, just recognizing what a stressful year it's been for everyone and wanting to make sure everyone was taking time to just completely unplug, de-stress. So I think that's the perfect example of, of the, the type of culture that, that we have, very much focusing on on the well-being of, of the employee. Um, we also, you know, have a have a very diverse culture. Um, we we have a, a week um, each year, it's called Unity Week, where we celebrate the, the various cultures that we have um, across the world within IHS market. We learn about, you know, different, uh, different aspects of everyone's culture, which I think is really unique. And we're always looking for, for ways to continue to, you know, promote diversity and inclusion across the company. Thank you, thank you both. Um, I guess I, I don't I don't see any other um, questions. Uh, if uh, let's see, is there is there any way if any students have follow up questions? Is there is there a good way for them to get in touch with you? I think Kristen mentioned LinkedIn um, as an opportunity. What would you what would you suggest? Both of you. Um, Kira, I'm happy if, for, for you sharing my email address. If you wanted to share my email address with everyone, um, if they would like to reach out to me that way, um, that's fine as well. That would be wonderful. How about you, Sid? Would you? Would yeah, you it's the same. That? It's the same. Yeah. This is great. It's easy to share. I'll, email. Do, I'll do that. Then I'll share both of your email addresses at the end of the event, and and so students will be able to reach out to you if they have any any specific questions. I really would like to thank both of you for taking the time to join us today. I know that we went uh, a little over time, uh, but it was a very good conversation. I think we got answers to a lot of questions. Um, I, I think it was helpful for the students. And I, again, I really wanna thank you personally for, for joining for joining us during this, this hour today. And I guess at this point, I will hand this over to Dave. Oh, thank you, Kira, and thank you to our, our distinguished speakers, our panelists, as well as our student moderators, and to everybody that has listened. I, I have learned an awful lot uh, through this experience, and uh, I'm very grateful, uh, uh, first to you, Kiara, for your, uh, for your efforts here in pulling this together. A note to everyone, this is a series, so we will be doing three more, at least three more of these. Um, and, and I encourage you to attend. Just uh, for a reminder, this webinar has been recorded, will be on our website in our Rewind station um, uh, probably uh, later today. So please uh, encourage your, your colleagues um, uh, to, uh, to, to, to listen. Also a reminder on joining the association, visit us at www.usae.org. We'd love to have you be a part of our society. Thank you once again, and I officially close this webinar. Thank you.